one. All right, one, one of the things, some of you have heard this before, but one of, one of my goals when I started SVBR was um, I really, really wanted to create a place where Philip Rosedale would come and speak. And, <laughs> and I'm so happy to say that Philip has spoken many times now at SVBR events, at our meetups, at our uh, keynote at our first conference. He'll be one of the keynote speakers tomorrow. But here he is giving you an in-depth uh, session, in, an in-depth uh, look into high fidelity and the latest of high fidelity. So. With that, please, Philip Rosedale, please come to the stage. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Carl. Uh, yes, our, our very first uh, demonstration of high fidelity, which was, I, it got to be two and a half years ago. Uh, we started working about three years ago, was, was for uh, an early SVBR. And you know what was inspiring was, to you think about it now, it seems obvious, but Carl was, was pitching this stuff and bringing us all together and getting everybody to, to come and have pizza and share their stories, like in the DK1. I mean, well, probably even before, but I remember when I first got there, I mean, we were as yet a world that was unsure whether there would even be HMDs, which is amazing. So you've been hanging in there for a while. Um, I also, I think Carl likes me to speak because no, no speech from High Fidelity is complete without a, an absurdly high risk and complicated demo. And that as always, is what you're going to get today, in part because uh, we made a big announcement this morning and uh, in the news that uh, we're, we're launching uh, a beta of High Fidelity, the Sandbox, which I'm going to tell you more about in a minute. But let's just talk a little bit about what, what we're trying to do, um, VR beyond gaming. You know, I think that VR is one of these very profoundly big and disruptive things. I've said this so many times before. I know everybody here is thinking that as well. But I would really encourage us all to remember that we don't understand what's happening. We don't understand. When we, when we started the Internet, we thought it was a library, an amazing library. Amazing. I mean, we were all just stark amazed in the mid-'90s as to what, an, what a remarkable library uh, the Internet was going to be. And we were so right and we were so wrong because it was going to be so much bigger than that. VR is the same thing. I think right now this phase one of VR that we've all been in and, and we've been having a fun time in, and it's an amazing time right now because the hardware is finally there and it works and we're all putting it on and smiling that you know it's well designed and it fits us and it's smooth and it's fast and it's fantastic. Um, but we are still in phase one. We're talking about immersion. We're talking about the ability to simply put the headset on and be in a virtual world. Um, and, and when we talk about immersion, we're talking about gaming. We're talking about these point-like experiences, these applications that we run on our computers that uh, take us away to another world. Uh, but that's just the first phase in all this. And the second phase, I believe, is going to be people. It's going to be all of the things that we do when we can get together in these spaces. And so that's obviously what High Fidelity has been working on forever. Uh, and it, what we, we like to think of it not as social VR, but as shared VR. As, thank you. as soon as you want to bring other people into the mix, you have to solve a bunch of problems. Um, not just audio. We've all tried that in a demo or two. But, but, but physics and animation and scripting, almost everything that we do as developers of content, as software developers, has to now be networked in an environment like this. The other thing is that content has to be portable in some manner. We think of portable content as mesh files today. You know, a lot of systems let us upload a, a, a mesh file, but we've got to go beyond that. Portable content has to be like a, 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 a slide projector that works or a machine gun or a car or something like that. So we've got to have a concept of what portable content means if we're to enable shared VR and get to this next stage. Hyperlinks, same thing. If, if people are deploying their own servers, which they're going to need to be able to do, I need to have some way to carry myself and my representation from one server into another server. So that I'm using the word hyperlink there in a general sense, but we've got to solve that if we're going to get to this next stage where we're all in there in some way together. Um, and then open source, and not just open source, but open protocols, open formats, uh, well-described things that connect all this stuff together. That's what we saw with the internet as we started to create these remarkable services uh, and deployments that the internet brought us you know, in the late 90s. We're probably going to need the same thing here. So I think those are the requirements of shared VR. And you know, if you want to look at a picture and see all this brought together, some of you have probably already tried this at our booth. You know, what do we have here? Well, we have two avatars that have distinct uh, appearances, right, that were created presumably by their, their owners, right, standing in a space together, one of them holding a whiteboard marker, that's some kind of a tool that has some functional capability, right, 
because he's going to write on that whiteboard. You know, the cuckoo clock is something that works. The things on the shelf are probably, you know, knickknacks that were discovered somewhere else. Again, all, these are all the features that we need to somehow build uh, to, to, to move beyond the, the vertical application. Um, you know, everything's got everything's to work. But, uh, the, of course, the fun thing that we're, we're announcing today is that, you know, this isn't a screenshot, it's a live system. And so, uh, without further ado, let's get into giving you a, a really insane demo of this. And the first thing I want to do is invite Stephen Brarda, uh, who's the guy who's been leading uh, the team that has brought us the Sandbox server. And so, have at it. Thank you. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to install on this machine, and this is just all our craziness, uh, all of these... Uh, this whole thing that we're announcing today, we're going to install from scratch on this machine. So what Steven's going to start with is uh, our download page, and he's going to basically start downloading this thing. So what is he downloading? The sandbox. That's what we're announcing today, the high fidelity sandbox. And Chris <laughs> Collins, thank you, is there, unable to see. Chris is a brave man who has done this, has done this before several times. Among us, he's the one willing to stand on stage in the Vive now. Uh, without being able to see. We're joking about trying to walk him off the edge of the front edge of the stage. So Steven's downloading uh, the, the sandbox. Now, what, is, what does that mean? He's going to download it and install it on this machine, on this laptop right here. The sandbox is the server. It's the high-fidelity server. The sandbox is going to install itself. It's going to install a bunch of components. The components are the audio server. There's a little audio server. There's an entity, what we call an entity server, that stores the information about the objects in that room that we just saw. Um, there are several other servers. It's a componentized system with these small modular servers. This, these servers that he's installing on the sandbox on the laptop can also be installed on an EC2 server at Amazon, if you like, and we're going to show you that, uh, hopefully, in a minute here. So now you can see Hello Worlds. The sandbox server has now come up. It's basically running all the time on your machine. You can let it come up as, you know, whenever the machine restarts. And there's a tray icon in the bottom that you know, Stephen can go to. And this gives you the capabilities to like, start and stop the server and manage it. So he's going to go to the settings, right? So this is the web page that that server emits that lets us set up stuff. Like uh, if you want to restrict who can come and go to your server, you set it there. And the other thing you can do, what happened there? Oh, I just lost the scan. Oh, there, we're back. Um, so the other thing that we can do is, if you want to share this with your friends, when you download this sandbox today, hopefully all of you, um, you can install this, you can share this with, with 10 seconds with another friend who has high fidelity installed. And the way he does that is by this, every high fidelity server gets a temporary name, and there it is, Lavender Alarm 7877. We've got Jasmine and Chris here who are, gonna, who are basically going to jump into this server uh, now with us that we've set up. So basically everybody gets a hi-fi address which is set up for that sandbox automatically. If you uh, set up a named high fidelity server, uh, which you can also do at our site, giving, giving it a place name as we call it, which is just like a, a DNS uh, address, you can have named places, but this is the temporary name that he's given. So we're going to basically click on that and then I think he's going to go, Steven's going to actually go, gonna go into the world himself. And already in there, we can see Jasmine. Say hello, Jasmine. And Chris is, Chris is doing something. So you can see Jasmine waving at us. There it is. You can see the latency. Put your hand up again, Jasmine, and move it back and forth. So it's very, very low latency. Obviously, everything we're doing over the network is, is low latency. Uh, Chris is going to, they're trying. You got it? Are you ready? So. As I said before, so Jasmine can basically move around this room and do anything she wants to do. Uh, the other cool thing that Jasmine is going to show us at the same time with Chris uh, is that she can build. So that's one of the things she's going to start doing. I'm still waiting for Chris to come alive here. You want to pick up? Can you pick up some stuff and show it to us, Jasmine? There we go. So there's, oh, we couldn't see Jasmine doing that. So the neat thing is, why don't you make a new thing for us, Jasmine? So you've all seen demos where, where we, actually, we've seen a few products now and, and projects where you can move things around. But Jasmine is now editing that object. We've seen those kind of live uh, Unreal and Unity demos. Same story here. She's got a bunch of edit controls that she can use in World. She's changing the color. She can move that object. And then as soon as Chris manages to get in here, she, made, she just made that object physical, and you know, Chris, as soon as he walks into the room here and gets his controllers, there he is, he can pick that thing up and start playing with it. 
Everything has physics, just like you've seen in so many great demos now out there on the floor. It's unbelievable what you can do. I like the fact that in VR now that we've got the low latency, the high frame rates, we can do things like that better here than we can in the real world. I mean, I think that's one of those amazing side notes about why this is all going to be so crazy. One of my favorite things to do, you can show us, Stephen, is like uh, I, I put my 12-year-old uh, daughter on here to, to test uh, last weekend. And the thing she did was just stick the chair up in the ceiling fan. That was a pretty good one, actually. So you can see the physics engine is, is very good. Um, the ceiling fan blades are fully modeled as collision hulls. Um, again, you can upload all this stuff yourself. And it's just, a, it's just a totally amazing. Show us the tilt maze. Show us the little, here's a little thing we made. Now, the sandbox server, this is, where's the ball? Come on, Chris. Oh, that one has a little magic ball. There's a little script that remakes the ball if you lose it. So, I mean, we, don't, we haven't even begun to discover what even the simplest physical behaviors, you know, how entertaining and amazing those are going to be. Part of our goal here with Sandbox is to give people a living workspace where they can start playing and building things like what, like what Jasmine was doing there. Incredible. I can still remember doing this with the Hydra at 20 frames per second when we first got our stuff running. Um, there's lights in here. Obviously, there's sounds on everything. I said that there's the cuckoo clock just just chimed. That's one of the scripted objects in here. Yeah. So the so the so the next thing we can show you is you know lest you believe that we're just doing something with little squares and blocks, Chris, uh, uh, sorry Stephen, is actually going to go to Sketchfab, and he's going to download something from Sketchfab as a mesh file. Yes, it is. The camera is the third character. Yeah. Um, feel feel free to ask questions too about it if they, if they're relevant. If you don't, if something's confusing. So, the sandbox server uh, obviously just comes preloaded with the content you see here. So when you download it and fire it up, it has all this content. But obviously, as we're showing you, you can delete this room, the whole house, and just start uploading stuff. So what Steven's going to do right now is literally drag and drop that mesh into here. It gets put into what we call that the asset server, which is another one of those small servers that comes with your sandbox. And then he's going to be able to add it to the world, walk over there. It's kind of small right now, but he's going to like go over closer to it so you can see it. Now, what's really cool, um, all the objects in High Fidelity are entities, and they have properties. As a programmer using JavaScript, you can create the entities, move them around, change all these properties. What uh, Steven is doing right now is resizing this little trailer that he just you saw that he imported, and he's giving it some gravity, and he's making it uh, dynamic so it'll move, and then I think he's going to make it like grabbable, right? And that's going to let you know uh, uh, Chris drop his uh, desk board here and walk up and actually grab the thing. You can see there's two kinds of grabbing. This is another fun thing, just in terms of the amazing challenges of open world UX design. Um, we can grab things with our hands by pointing at a distance, kind of spiking them with the laser beam, and then pulling them to us, which you see, you've seen them doing a bunch. We can also grab things conventionally just by putting your hand on them so that you can pick them up and rotate them. And all of this works uh, perfectly, as you're seeing right here. Now, there are three or four people there. There's, <laughs> there's our favorite book, everybody. Zoom in on that. <laughs> Go up really close. You can actually see again, you know, all this is streamable content. So that has a very high resolution texture on the back. I think show us the back, Kaylin. I think you can I think you can read the back of the I think you can read the raving Ernest Klein love reviews on the back. But uh, yeah, I mean every everything, I mean you're gonna be able to create to absolutely to your wildest dreams in here. I mean we, we really think that this is a pretty full feature set. Now, there's just four of us in here. Again, you can just email this link to a friend, you know, hopefully today, and, and, and bring them in and, and see how it works. Um, but you can all, we, there are also many more servers that we can go to that are very large spaces, um, and hopefully larger and larger as the days go on. So back on the wall, yeah, hey, Chris, waving goodbye. On the wall back there, you can see a little sign for the playa. This is just a test space that we have up right now. We've had it up for a while. Some of our alpha users have been helping us add to it. And he can basically sort of bring up this address bar. He's, he's, we're going to a slightly different place in there than the original playa. But he just types stacks, which is a location in that server. And then with a little luck, we're now we're on the internet. Talk about crazy demos. Um, Show Network has 
always conspired to defeat us here. But uh, so that's live streaming coming in from San Francisco. And you can see our homage to Ready Player One <laughs> right here. Um, in the distance, way off in different directions, we have different projects people are working on. And um, I think if Steven flies over, uh, like kind of to the center area, if, if you try this out and you come into Playa, you're going to show up in here. A number of people have been coming in since we did the press uh, announcement this morning at uh, a press event. And so if we, if we come down here, this is where new people are coming in. Yeah, yeah it is. It is. Really amazing. So you can hear everybody. I, can we I, get a? I really think it was a texture's optimization. Can we get a tell everybody? Took us into the hello. Next step hello, the hello, high fidelity. Hello. 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 That's hello cool. over there. From the alpha. <laughs> that is so We're cool. We're in the metaverse. <laughs> Thanks, well, you guys. Everybody's been office. sitting. I think so. We got a bunch of people from work, and I see a blue well, person in the back there. That's probably somebody new uh, coming in. But uh, pretty amazing, right? That's the that's the public space oh, called the playa. And of course, are. you'll be putting up public spaces like these that people will be gathering in. Um, the point here is, uh, you know, editing is everything. That we're we're gonna, you know, watch this space in the weeks to come, and you're gonna start seeing people building amazing new things in here. Um, in fact, one of the things that I'll mention in a moment that we're doing this weekend, we're having a hackathon. So uh, along with, this, uh, along with this, uh, these release announcements, our first event is to invite uh, a bunch of people. We've got, I think, somewhere between like 60 and 100 people coming to San Francisco to join us at the Upload Collective, where we're going to do a hackathon event this weekend. And we're going to just have people building things in here. We're going to feature uh, in the playa some of the most amazing stuff that people build. We're going to give away a bunch of vibes. Um, if anybody's uh, a content developer or a developer and you have any interest in participating in that, um, if you track us down at the booth or outside of here, we can uh, see if we can get you into the event if you'd like to. Um, but that's an example of a big public server. Uh, as we move our technology forward, we'll be scaling the capacity of these machines from the sort of dozens of people that you see now to hundreds and then thousands. We have our, our, our fundamental architecture, as some of you have heard in my prior presentations, is designed to do that. But we're really excited with what we've gotten out uh, today. And that was a remarkably, uh, come on, that was a pretty good demo, local and wired demo. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. We gave you the live demo there. We didn't have to show you the video. Um, so just, just uh, uh, retouching the features a little bit and then save time, get, jump into some questions if, if, if we can. Uh, there's a low latency 3D audio mixer. Um, doing 3D audio for both you and for sound effects is a considerable problem. You have to do some of the HRTF related stuff basically on a server so that you can mix together when all those people shouted at me at the same time. Uh, they were all being processed to come from the correct apparent locations, but I was only getting one audio stream. That's a pretty unique piece of technology. It's one of the amazing things that we've done in this, in this engine that, that is open source that you can download. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a very fast uh, HRTF. It's, it's an amazing sounding one, so it's a, some very good work there. The live editing tools you saw, you can basically uh, manipulate with both hand controllers and with the mouse uh, the, the content that you've got in the world. The JavaScript API didn't really touch much on that. Very comprehensive, building things, making sounds, applying velocities to things, uh, resetting object properties. Uh, you can create all kinds of complex emergent behaviors. Uh, uh, hopefully, pretty much everything you'd need to sort of go into a shared space and start, uh, and, and as a script, uh, make programmatic things. Distributed physics, you definitely saw a bunch of that. This problem of having multiple things colliding with each other with multiple people looking at them is a considerable problem. Physically-based rendering, um, we're using a physically-based rendering model, very rich, so you can have very uh, beautiful materials that you can bring directly in from other environments. You can use any avatar. We're uploading avatars from standard mesh files and skeletons. Uh, you can use things like the Mixamo's, Mixamo's Fuse pipeline, but you can also just use avatars directly as model skeletal model files. Um, you can directly upload OBJ and FPX. You saw that. Uh, Steven did it. This means that you can bring a lot of things out of Unity sets if you'd like to. Uh, to the extent that you can export things to FBX from Unity, you can take some of the uh, spaces that you've been creating in Unity and just, just literally bring them onto a server right now. Um, and all of this is free um, and under the Apache 2 license. So pretty cool. Um, some of the first, you know, what, what, are, what are people going to do with this? Uh, I hope a lot. 
uh, we just showed you kind of building and exploring, just being able to put up your own space or, or do the science experiment or do the psychology experiment, thinking of one of our advisors, Jeremy Balenson, who's been using high fidelity in that regard. Uh, you know, uh, setting up the kind of experimental things that we've all been doing uh, with systems like Unity today, doing those things as a shared experience should now be hopefully as straightforward uh, using high fidelity. So I think we're going to see a lot of stuff happen. Distance education, we've talked about it and demonstrated it before. I continue to believe, I mean, now that we're all starting to get these headsets, that putting these headsets on people and teaching them things in shared environments is going to be an unbelievable use case. And I think that uh, hopefully high fidelity can be a, a great system for that. And then, of course, live events, which, you know, things like this are going to become uh, wonderful events. So uh, that's pretty much it. Um, it's, it's there. It's available to download today. As I said, the hackathon is this weekend. And, and, and please come and find any of us. Um, uh, so we can uh, help you out if you have any interest in doing that, and I'd be glad to maybe take some questions. So the question is, can you have your own face? Well, obviously, uh, those two high-resolution uh, avatars that we showed you are avatars that were scanned with one of our partners, XX Array, down in Los Angeles. They use a very large uh, system of about 100 cameras that shoots you all at once. However, there are a bunch of great products on the market that do allow you to go from uh, a 2D photograph, I've not seen as many systems I've been delighted with from that sparse a data set, but there are a number of systems that let you shoot a number of pictures with a standard uh, camera and then bring those into a mesh, and that you absolutely can take that mesh and, and bring it in as an avatar with, with a little work today. This is all beta. That you'll find lots of bugs. Please share the bugs you find with us. And uh, anyway, thank you very much for having me. Thanks, you guys.